Hello VC! Welcome to the Inner Sleeve. I'm your host DR. And today I have something different for you. It's not a vinyl arrival. It's not a vinyl review. It is an equipment review. And what am I reviewing? I am reviewing this, the Record Pie Flattener. And the reason I'm reviewing this is because I decided to get it recently because of this album, The Blackening by Machine Head. I had ordered a um, recent reissue of The Blackening, and it was on ghostly vinyl, looked really cool. Got it home, went to spin disc one, and it wouldn't play because it was so frickin' warped, the needle actually jumped off of it. I know that's hard to believe. I've had a lot of warped records. This was the first one, I think it's the first one that I've had where it was simply unplayable. I contacted the local record store. He said that he could not get another copy for me. He said he had somebody that had a record flattener and would be willing to flatten it for me, but I have been looking at this for a while. I have a lot of records that are warped. Almost, I would say, more than 50% of the new vinyl I get has some warp to it. So I decided to pick it up and give it a try. And so what I'll do today in this uh, review and also some tips, hints, uh, I'm not going to actually go like too in-depth, but I wanted to guys, let you guys know how it worked for me. So I'm going to go show you what's in this bag and how it works, and then I'm going to talk about the results. All right, let's take a look at the Record Pie Record Flattening System. So it all comes in this nice bag, which is part of what you use to flatten records. Because the bag is insulated like a pizza bag. For keeping your pizza warm. So we have, of course, various cords and etc. So I'll show how this all connects here in a minute. And then we have the heavy metal part of the device here. So a lot of people that have done reviews on this complain about this. Uh, off-center wing nut, and I agree, why didn't they just do a regular wing nut? This thing doesn't actually go on and off that easy. You pull off the wing nut, there's a little plastic washer. You pull off the top plate here, which is quite heavy, part of the flattening system, obviously, to apply weight. Basically, you're applying heat and force to flatten your record. So it comes with these... Uh, With these uh, pads, I don't know, I can't think of the word. But basically your record goes in between these two. You put that in and then uh, you put that back on and you, you apply the, the wing nut to uh, keep it all tight together. So these, uh, these fabric rings are called groove guard rings. And you do get a variety depending on the warp of your record to use. Uh, the ones with the big opening here, I believe, are for dish warps, and then you have ones that are for 45s. You do get some great directions here that walks you through the whole process. Walks you through how to, uh, you know, it has your temperature controller, which is this. So this is a big part of it that gets it up to the proper temperature and holds it there. So it talks about how the different steps how to connect it to your Wi-Fi network. So I will say the Wi-Fi connection is uh, interesting. So it does not operate on a 5 gigahertz. It only operates on a 2.4 gigahertz network. In my case, I have a 5 gigahertz network, but you can, there is a alternate um, network that it has that I can go down to 2.4, but it's so much slower and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So one thing I did find is that it was kind of annoying to have to change down to 2.4 gigahertz. It does have an app. So the app it uses is your Smart Life app here. Um, it's offline because currently it's not on. And also I'm on the 5 gigahertz network, like I said. It requires a 2.4 gigahertz network connection. That's why it says, it says device connection failure. Um, so I change it back to the... I change it back to the, the 2.4 gigahertz when I use it. Um, for the most part, so the app allows you to turn on, uh, to turn off 
and to see the temperature that the device is currently at. So you can do this remotely as well. As long as you start it with the 2.4 gigahertz when you leave and you're on a cell network, it seems to work fine. Uh, I did have it fail to shut off once when I tried to do it remotely. So I think that was because my phone had changed to five gigahertz before I left my house and then I was unable to control it remotely. So I do recommend that you are either make sure you have a solid 2.4 gigahertz connection or if you're gonna be gone for a long time and it's important that it gets shut off, I don't know that I would risk that. I would be home to make sure it does get shut off. But it does allow you remote access. It's nice to be able to see what temperature it's at. So continuing to uh, look at what's included, uh, I showed the directions. Here it walks you through the process. They wanna make sure that you clean the vinyl record with a brush, um, your favorite cleaning solution. You don't wanna put a dirty record on it because it could bake in the dirt. You place the vinyl in, in the middle of the record pie device and loosely tighten the wing nut over the washer. So again, your record would be between these groove guards. You place the top plate on, you have your washer, and you put your wing nut on. And then uh, the bottom here, it does, this part does spin unless you hold it. So if you want to tighten it up a little bit, then you got to kind of hold that as you're doing it, which is kind of annoying too. They should have made it kind of lock in place. You do have to connect, this is your temperature probe. So you do need to connect the temperature probe to your temperature control device. So there is a port here on the side where you connect it. And then this sensor goes on the back here in this plastic piece and it holds it in a location where it can read the temperature so that it can control to the temperature that you want it set at. And so once your temperature probe is connected, you can then slide the, the record sandwich into the pizza bag and close the Velcro strip. Now you have the wire for the power, which is gonna to connect to your temperature controller. Some of this seems a little chintzy and plasticky, but it works. Your cord here goes into your temperature controller, like that. And then you plug this into your wall outlet. And I'll show that in a minute. But before we do that, we are going to close up the pizza bay. You will notice that you can't close the zipper all the way, which is another annoying thing about this. It would have been nice if they would have had, I don't know, these cords come out in such a way that like out the bottom sealed or something, but it comes out the top by the zippers. So you just close it as far as you can to try to keep most of the heat in. So now we're going to plug it into the wall outlet. So now that our temperature controller is plugged in, you can see we're at 74.1 degrees Fahrenheit with a target of 135. We have various settings here. You can change the temperature setting, the target setting, some other settings, power button to turn it on and off. So now that I've had a chance to show you the equipment and how it works, I'd tell you a little bit about my uh, results with it. Uh, so the blackening, I started with this album and disc one had a really bad warp to it, like I said. This was the first time I used the record pie. So I started with a trial run, no record, just heated it up um, for about uh, 30 minutes. Uh, it took actually 40 minutes to get to what they recommend as a starting temperature at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. I put the record in, I baked it for two and a half hours at 125F. I noticed a slight change, uh, slightly reduction in the warp, but nothing significant. So I put it in for three hours at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. I noticed some improvement, did a visual check, um, should have checked playability, but I did not. Um, so the next day I put it in again for three and a half hours at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Play tested and it will play through, but I still saw a needle move and hear a corresponding noise um, where there was the warp. So I put it in again for another four hours at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. 
I didn't see any significant change from before. And then I put it in the next day, increased it to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, baked it for three and a half hours, and that was where I left it. And it got rid of the warp to a point where it plays through. There is some noticeable audible distortion still where the warp is. Um, I thought about trying a little bit more, but it went from non-playable to playable with a little bit of audible distortion. So I was pretty happy with that result, but it took a long time to get there. So, what I've decided to do as I, <clears throat> try, if I, as I tried it on subsequent records is to increase the temperature to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. They're very, in, their, in the instructions, they cautions, caution you very much to just start at the 120 or the 125. Um, but what I've seen is for me, 135 degrees Fahrenheit at two and a half to three hours seems to do pretty well in most of my warped records. So next one I tried it on was uh, disc one of Alice Cooper Brutal Planet, a recent reissue. I baked it at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two and a half hours and I saw a good improvement and I only did it for that one time. I then moved on to Primal Fear Code Red, their recent uh, release. I, I had, uh, I think it was just disc one that I baked at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two and a half hours. Again, a good improvement, and I didn't bake it any further. I then, I had a record in my collection that was barely playable, Pearl Jam uh, 10. And I baked disc one for 135 degree, at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two and a half hours. And I did see a good improvement or an okay improvement on disc one. And then I also did disc two for the same duration and saw an okay improvement. So good improvement means I got rid of a lot of the warp. Okay improvement means I got rid of some of the warp. Um, record Pie does not say they're going to totally eliminate the warp in the record, but it, it does promise improvement. And in every case that I've used this, I did see good improve, or I saw okay improvement to good improvement. And getting warped records to nearly flat to where they look nice when you're playing them and they're not going up and down and your needles all over the place. So I did, um, I also picked up the recent reissue of Machine Head Ashes Through Empires and I baked, uh, Baked both of those discs for 135 degrees Fahrenheit at uh, three hours, and I saw good improvement on both. Uh, I recently picked up Ghost. Uh, they new live album or the soundtrack album. I forget what it's called. And I mean, I just picked it up like a week ago. So I am no longer afraid to pick up new vinyl and concerns about warp. So now I can pick up a new record, know that I have a way to fix the warp if there is any. So when I picked up Ghost's recent uh, soundtrack or live, live album, uh, it did have some warp. So I baked disc one at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two and a half hours and saw a good improvement. And I did the same thing with disc two with the same results. So I will say that the Record Pi record flattening system works. It does what they advertise. Uh, it's not cheap. I think it was 250 or 275 when I picked it up. I know they're constantly running a sale on it, like 20% 20, 20 off or something like that on their website. So if you do have a lot of records with warp, it's probably a good investment. 
Uh, if you don't have a lot of warped records or you really don't care and it plays through and it's fine, then don't pick it up. I mean, it's a sizable investment. But I am looking forward to continuing to be able to fix records that I get that are warped with this. And also I've offered up to some of my friends, if they have warped records, I'd be more than happy to uh, see what the record pie can do for them. So hope you guys enjoyed this uh, record pie equipment review. If you did, please like and subscribe. Keep those turntables spinning. See ya.